to use the covertices. So the first thing I want to do in this case is, again, write this in our conic section form. right? So the first thing I'm going to do is divide my 4 on both sides. So therefore, I have x squared over 4 minus y plus 1 squared over 1 equals 1. Right? You don't have to write it over 1, but I think it's always helpful to kind of have that 1 there. Right? You don't have to write it there, but it's, it's helpful to kind of know because this is a hyperbola, right? So we remember hyperbola is a squared minus b squared. So we know my a squared is going to be 4. Therefore, a is equal to 2. b squared is equal to 1. Therefore, b is equal to 1. And c squared is a squared plus b squared, which is 5. So therefore, c equals the square root of 5. Did you guys see how quickly I was able to do all of that? Right? And you guys should be able to do the same if it's an ellipse or a hyperbola. The next thing is we need to identify the center. Um, so remember that the uh, h is always with x. So therefore, I do not subtract anything from x. So therefore, my h is 0. And then my uh, k is always with my y. So it's, remember, it's y minus k. So therefore, y minus what would be positive 1? y minus negative 1. So my center is going to be at 0, comma, negative 1. All right, so I'm going to sketch that information. 0, negative 1, and I'm going to label it. Now, since my a squared is under my x, x, since my a is under my x, should my transverse axis be horizontal or should it be vertical? Horizontal. So you don't have to do this, but I like to do it to avoid making mistakes. I just sketch a nice little axis, and I just label it with a t. And that just triggers my brain to say, OK, the transverse axis is horizontal. What lies on the transverse axis? Over 32. So the transverse axis is going to lie horizontal. It's going to lie on the vertices as well as the foci. So what we're going to do in that case is um, we need to find our a, which is 2. So that means going to be going left and right. So let's go to the right 2 and to the left 2. And we'll label those our two vertices. Okay? And technically, guys, what did we really do? We just took 0 and added 2 and subtracted 2, right? So I can say my vertices are going to be plus or minus 2, comma, negative 1. Really went 2 to the right, negative 1, and 2 to the left, negative 1. Right? My foci also lie on my transverse axis. And that's a distance of c. Now. This kind of confuses people again when we have square roots we don't know. And I'm sure with the calculator, you guys would probably type in square root of 5. But in reality, guys, by the time it even takes you to touch your calculator, you know the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So would you agree with me a square root of 5 is somewhere in between 2 and 3? And you can probably figure that out quicker than it is to grab your calculator and turn it on. And that's all you need to do is just, um, just estimate where it should be. Okay. That's it. And, but that is basically saying plus or minus square root of 5, comma, negative 1. <coughs> okay. Um, and then last but not least is our asymptotes. So the equations of the asymptotes are over there. Um, but I am going to show you, uh, I'll show you how to graph them in a second. So this is a horizontal transverse axis. So by the equation of my asymptotes, the asymptote equation looks like this. y equals um, plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k. Now do we have a, b, h, and k? Yeah. So y equals plus or minus b over a, which is 1 half x plus k, which is minus 1. So guys, is that really that hard of an equation to graph? Oh, from your algebra 1 days, you should be able to do that, right? But it's OK. I'm not even going to expect you guys to you know, graph that. The way that I would do it is, again, find my covertices, which is up 1 and down 1. I would create a box. And then by creating my box, I can draw my asymptotes, I think, with better ease. OK? 
Okay, I'm not gonna be anything exact. I will say that I will want you to have the equation written down, um, but, and then graphing can just be a rough sketch. Doesn't need to be anything perfect, okay?